everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon Bellum. I am pretty much Bellum Make on almost all other social media, including Instagram and Ravelry. I'm how that should be on the screen at the moment. Um, welcome back uh, to, to, to returning viewers and welcome new viewers alike. I am so happy that you could be here today with me while I give you um, an, an update on what I've been doing um, knit-wise the past week and design-wise the past week and we're I'm just going to, going to chat with you about what's been on my needles and what's been going on in my head <laughs> knit-wise and um, yeah so let's get started first of all my I did finish the doodler by Stephen West I don't have it with me to show you but I'll put a picture in here I, it was a gift for my niece and she turned 12 this past week so I I gave it to her and it looks lovely on her and you're you've seen a picture already of her and that was a very impromptu picture we didn't style her or anything just had her put it on and I just snapped a quick picture picture of her um, but yeah, if you're curious about the yarns that I used, you can check out my Ravelry project page or you can go back a video, just one video back, one episode back, I'll, I talk about the yarns that I used for that. I am wearing the Stanham Cardigan by Blacker Knits Design Team and it was a test knit. Um, I, it's out of the uh, Lolo Did It Blackberry Jam color and I just saw on Instagram I think it was yesterday that she is going to have more of this color in her next shop update. I think it was originally a Christmas color, I'm not sure, but it's really beautiful. It's just this color is really happening right now. I love it um, and I have a lot of yarn in it and uh, yeah, so it's a beautiful burgundy with black speckles and it's got some some cool, on the cool side of orange speckles, so like a very mellow, not bright orange speckle in it as well. Uh, and I paired it with um, some singles, some multicolored singles yarns from Undercover Otter, which you can see all the details about this sweater on my project page as well. And I also talked about it in the last few videos, so you can check those out if you're interested. So that is my one fi finished object that I have for this week. So let's get into what I'm working on. I am drowning in shawls, <laughs> but the one shawl that I am not working on is on Martha. Martha's wearing. This is the Dorami sweater from, um, it's published in this quarter's Pom Pom Magazine, and it's a design by Isabel Kramer. I've never made an Isabel Kramer pattern before, so this was this has been interesting. Like I said, I always learn something. She she has an interesting way of doing short rows, so that's that's my my thing I learned with this pattern so far. Um, this is the this morning when I was prepping for the video, I I um, separated the piece onto two needles so I could get it on Martha. So this is my first time seeing it on her, and it I think it came out so nice. I love the neckline. I was a little concerned that the this fold over. Um, trim would lift off the neck a little bit but I it is a teeny bit here just lifting up but I think after blocking it should be fine I'm guessing it will be fine um, yeah so so far so good on Pom Pom's magazine cover this is pink up here this is black and then this is a neutral and they used a Japanese wool I'm using indie dyed yarns um, because it's what I had on hand I'm, I'm Really trying to utilize my stash. Um, not, I'm not looking to get, you know, get rid of it or even cut down. I just want to make use of. I tend to buy things that I am attracted to and that I like, and I do a lot of one single skein things, just knowing that I'll use them for something. Um, because this, actually, this part right here um, of this skein, which is a lavender loon. Um, Lavender Loon Company, Yarn Company. She's a Minnesota-based dyer. Um, this is a, this was this is one skein. I didn't even use the whole thing, um, and I actually don't have what's I don't have what's left of it in here. Um, so yeah, want single skeins. I, I don't really worry about it. And and if I really want to make something that I need more than one skein, I can generally get more. And with any dyed yarn, you're um, 
you're usually alternating skeins anyway, so if it dye lot doesn't really matter, I don't think too much with indie dyed. At least I haven't experienced it. The only the single exception to that would be um, Primrose Yarn Company. There's some there can be some pretty drastic differences in her yarn. I love her yarn, but there can be like I had a color that I loved and I wanted to use it. Um, actually, this one like a hurricane. I wanted to use it in a bigger sweater and I when I kept when I would go back to her website I tried a couple times I the color looked very different from this one I don't think I could even get away with alternating skeins and having it look nice so um, with her I would say if you like the color and you think you might want a sweaters quantity just get it <laughs> because um, the, the dye batches change um, in a more significant way than I've noticed with with you know most of the indie dyers that I know of. Um, the body is a of this one, so I used up a little bit more of like a hurricane. If you remember, I used that in my arboreal sweater at the for the top of the yoke. I was really looking for a black tone purple, and this fit the bill perfectly. Um, I am this is a DK weight sweater. I am holding two strands together, as you can see right here, of the body. Um, so the whole thing, I held two strands together. To, to equal two strands of fingering weight together to equal uh, DK weight. This is Stitch Together Studio. I have this right here. The color is called In the Buff, and it's her twisted sock base. I love this color. I have been on kind of a neutral kick, though. That it's going to surprise you when you see what see my stash acquisitions. But I've been um, I found that I I have been buying neutrals. I think I had a lot of color in my stash, and I was feeling like that needed to be balanced out with some neutrals. Um, but in this case, I am doing this entirely. This sweater will be entirely neutral, and I just turn the camera slightly so you can see a little more. Her. There you go. It's a little bit better, right? At least for Martha. Um, but yeah, so I really, really love this. It's I'm very happy with it. Um, I cast this on primarily because I um, I wanted a mindless knit that would be good for social knitting and good for um, uh, just like I was saying last time, I, I when I'm reading papers, academic papers, and I'm grading papers that my class has written, I um, I like to have some, something in my hands. It helps me concentrate. So knitting something that I don't have to look at is really, really helpful for, for that. Yeah, so that is the progress I made on that. My um, other whips are all shawls. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to start with what I, my continuing whip. I have this in my, um, I've shown this before, but it's been a couple weeks. Um, this is a Harry Potter inspired project bag from Southern Sparrow Handmade. Um, and inside, it's pretty cool. Inside it has the Marauder's Map in the inside pockets. And I am using it for my Harry Potter inspired shawl design called the shawl that lived um, the shawl is is knit in sections that um, the lace work sections end up being um, the shape of a lightning bolt so and then at the end at the after you're done um, so you start with this little section here this one oh actually here let me just show you the let me just show you this back It'll make sense. It'll make more sense than me trying to get the whole thing on. Okay, so there's the spec. So you see, or the um, spec sketch. So you see over here, you start with this section, section one, then you move up to this section here, and this is the um, beginning of the lightning bolt, and then you go up to section three, then section four, and then finally you do the, the trim all the way around, and you finish off the top here with an I-cord, an I-cord bind off. Um, Focus camera, focus. So th that's anyway. That's that's this pattern. Um, I'll also put a picture of my um, of a of a version that I have finished on screen as well. Um, I am knitting this out of Primrose <laughs> Yarn Company. Um, this color here, the one down here, is called Zipline. 
I am alternating skeins because um, the the two skeins I got were I got I bought them at the same time, um, but once I caked them up, they were they were pretty different. There was you know a lot more black in this one. So um, but alternating, you I don't even think you see it. So let me let me show you again. So I, I really don't think you see the difference in the in the skeins. Like you really don't notice where I've alternated at all. The pink, the pink is so cool. So the pink is from Teeny Button Studios. She's a New Orleans based. Sorry, I'm just gonna grab the. It's Teeny. Oof. Teeny Button Studios. Hang on, I'll fix the tag. Fix the ball band rather. So you can see the whole thing. There you go. Dyed in New Orleans, hand dyed in New Orleans. Um, this is she does Harry Potter colors in a really amazing way. I probably the only other person that would rival her in my view in terms of the Harry Potter yarns would be um, well Nora George does some Tracy of Nora George, but also Molly of Homespun House does um, does. Uh, they do Harry Potter colors, but um, Harry Potter colors here in the States, here in the U.S., um, Teeny Buttons Studios is the way to go. I love her yarn. I love the stitch definition I'm getting with this, with this soft sock base in the lace portion. The color, this color is called Hagrid's Umbrella. So um, Hagrid in the book has a pink umbrella. So I just love it. It's such a pretty, pretty tonal pink. It's really knitting up beautifully. Um, so yeah, I wanna get this done. I've had this on the needles for a long time, um, as is evidenced by my my little progress keeper here, my my Sugar Skull <laughs> progress keeper um, that I clipped on. I, I bought from, I think it was Sugar Tots. I'll, I'll correct that if I'm wrong in the, uh, on screen. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I Sugar Skulls to me are something that should be around all year, so. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's that's when I bought it. I have to stock up on my on my Halloween um, treasures when um, <laughs> when Halloween rolls around. So I stock up on black candles and all of the things that I like that I like year round bat stuff, sugar skulls, skulls in general. Um, I have oh I have another um, Pendleton Company mug from there. I think it's from their National Park series. Um, again, I got it from my brother who uh, gifts them to us. He sells them in his store in, in Cooperstown, New York. It's called Riverwood. Okay, so everything else I have are new cast-ons and um, shawls. I think I mentioned it last week that I had an idea for a worsted weight shawl and I had an idea for a fingering weight shawl. And um, I'm not too far on either one of them. Um, they are both center out cast-ons. Um, I think what I haven't shared with you are the the colors. I'm doing a, a neutral palette for this one. This is a fingering weight shawl. It's a center out cast-on, so I have it on double point needles right now. Um, this week we had a snow day. It We had a pretty intense snowstorm that it, the snow's all gone now pretty much I mean there's little patches around but um, it melted the next day but there was one day where we ended up my university closed and we had a snow day and I spent the entire day working on this fingering weight shawl I um, knit about 25% of it and it didn't come out quite the way I imagined from the sketch that I had so I was I went to bed kind of bummed that it wasn't coming out and I had thought that maybe I would push through and keep working on it but I changed my mind when I woke up and um, that morning before I went into the office I ripped the whole thing out <laughs> and started over <laughs> so I nevertheless I so I just have this teeny tiny piece done this is maybe a about three or four inches across. No, not even four. I'd say like three inches across. Um, my goodness, I'm using Primrose Yarn Company again. Um, this is a color called Black Truffle. You'd think I that I have so much of her yarn. I think all the yarn that I have of hers is in on the needles or knitted into projects. Like I don't have a lot of her yarn in my stash. At least I don't think I do. Um, 
but yeah, so this was the, this cake is small because this is the, the about half the skein that I had knit up, cut off the original skein and was continuing on with the next portion, which was a, a different color. And yeah, ripped back out again and re, re caked it. The, um, the second portion is going to be this. So, um, I'm doing a very neutral shawl here. <laughs> it This is a woolen vine yarn. Funny enough, after my little Halloween um, chat, this is a Halloween color. It's called Paranormal. So woolen vine. This is her Vogue base, which is her, um, her MCN base, Merino Cashmere Nylon base. Uh, and this this um, Primrose is also a MCN base. So there you go. I, I do have a third and perhaps fourth color planned, but I'm going to kind of see how it goes um, since it's a new design and just have a pretty good idea of where it's heading. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to, you know, how many other colors I'm going to add. Um, but yeah, so that's Paranormal by Fool and Vine. So there's my one shawl, second shawl, second shawl on the needles. And then I have a worsted weight shawl that I'm working on. This one I'm so excited about and I really, really want to just be monogamous and knit on it alone. But I'm in a bit of a pickle in that I, there were a couple of things that slowed me down with this. The, one of them was that I, well, I kind of didn't know exactly what I was going to do. Now I have it figured out, I think. I mean, we'll see how, as I, I when I design, I come up with a, an idea, um, a general idea, and a, an image I draw. I'm a, I always um, come up with an idea. I draw my idea out because you can usually work out a lot of your design issues on paper before you even start working in, in 3D, like working in a more dimensional way. So I find drawing very, very useful for that. So I drew my design, have my design drawn out. I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do, how I'm going to get there. And I realized, I started to swatch, and I realized that I didn't have the right size needles for this. So first I had to order needles. I still don't have all of them. I did get my double points, and this is another center out design. So I um, picked up some, uh, I needed size 8 or 5 millimeter needles. So I picked up the um, Knitter's Pride double points. I really like Knitter's Pride double points. They color code them based on... Um, the size so there it's easy to find the size when you're looking in your in your roll of double points it's easy to find the one that you're looking for if you know your your five millimeters are are red you can locate them right away and um, I also just like how smooth they are I'm pretty sure they're made out of wood they have grain and stuff on them I didn't really pay attention to that very much it was just like yes I love them I'm gonna get them so I had to order these I had to wait for them to come they came Thursday, so I was able to start the shawl. And I also realized that I only have one five millimeter circular needle, and it's a, I think it's 32 inch, which is great for a sweater. Um, but for a, a, this is another center out design, which I'm gonna show you in a sec. Um, I, I need a size 16 inch um, size. <laughs> circular needle. So because I this is quickly outgrowing these double points and I am anxious to get it on to a circular needle. So I don't have my 16 inch yet. So I got stuck with that. And then I also realized that after I had my drawing on paper that I will probably run out of one of the colors of yarn I had planned. So I got in touch with the yarn dyer to find out if there was more. And she said she's expecting more soon. So um, I'm waiting for those too. So I'm, I'm not going to get through this too quickly. And then the other thing I realized was that I wanted to add a, a, yet another color to this. So I ordered that yarn um, from, uh, from Stonewall. So without further ado, here's, my, here's what I've knit so far with this design. And this is the, um, this is Long Island Yarn and Farm. This is the uh, colorway that Christy Glass collaborated with Tabitha on. And yeah, so it's called Pink is Life. So that's the, that's the cake. 
It is, let me see if I have the paper so I can tell you what it's made out of. It's an alpaca wool blend merino. I think it's 70 percent alpaca. I'm not sure. I'll put it on screen. I don't have the ball band. Um, and then I'm combining that with um, the same, similar, very similar blend. This is the pink clove color. This is what I realized I need more of. I have one, one skein of this and I know I need at least two. I'm going to order a third one. So I'm going to order two more when she gets this in stock. It's, it's a very, very barely there pink. It reminds me a lot of the barely there pink in this color. Love it. In the buff. Um, so this one's called Pink Clove. And then I'm combining those two with um, the white, scoured white uh, yarn that's left over from my um, Big Bear Snow Bunny sweater. Such a nice soft um, yarn. So I ordered, for the section that I'm using this scoured white 100% um, American Cormo yarn in, from Stonewool, I ordered a second color um, for that. So more on this as it progresses. So assuming that I get the yarn from, I don't really want to push through too much to the part where I need the next color because I, I don't want to hurry up and wait. <laughs> I kind of want to be able to just let the creative process happen um, in real time and not get to a point or I'm stuck and frustrated. So yeah, so that's my third shawl. And then um, I, I succumb to a <laughs> to another shawl. I haven't cast it on yet, um, so it's in the planning stages. This I I listened to Curious Handmaid, Helen Stewart of Curious Handmaid. She is an Australian. London based. She's Australian, originally from Australia, but lives in London based designer, knitwear designer who has, she has a podcast. It's a real podcast, not a YouTube podcast. So I listen to it when I'm in the car or when I'm, you know, sitting, laying it, sitting in bed maybe and knitting and I'll, I'll pop her on. She does a weekly podcast. So she, she does a lot of really cool things. She does some knitting retreats, which I hope someday to, to jump in on one of those, like when I'm done with um, my uh, kid, my my sons and their expenses. Um, so I'm hoping to join one of those retreats. She runs like fairly small retreats. I think they're like 20 or 30 people, which um, sounds really great. A nice way to take a good vacation. I know she does one right before Edinburgh, so maybe I'm thinking like maybe next year I might try to try to do that with her. Um, but anyway, she is every year. I guess she does a mystery knit along. And if you've never done a mystery knit along, they're kind of scary. Um, I, my first one I did um, a, a year and a half ago with uh, Stephen West. It was his building block shawl, and I was really disappointed in the in the um, outcome. Because um, the thing with mystery knit alongs, there uh, very little information is given to you. You know that you should, you know, pick. Uh, you're given a little bit of guideline and color, and then you're also given. Um, the yarn amounts that you need and that that's it you're not given anything else and then week every week you get a clue and you knit um, and there's a lot of um, you know there's a lot of excitement in doing a mystery knit along like it's fun to watch the pattern come together I really like watching mystery knit alongs I don't like participating in them so much so I'm not sure how much I'm going to participate in this one I did buy the pattern I will be getting the clues along with everyone else I'm not sure how much I'm going to knit on it I'm I think it's it's a little bit more satisfying to wait to see how the colors are working together before you know because you can pick them but though in this one I think I'm sorry, I'm like, I feel like I'm kind of rambling, but um, <laughs> I think I'm pretty safe with my color choices because um, what the instructions say um, on uh, Curious Handmaid's Ravelry discussion page, there's a discussion page all about it if you're interested, and it's called Impressionists. So it's, um, her design is inspired by Impressionist painters from the mid-19th century and into the late 19th century. It's not my... It's not my most favorite. I know it's a very popular painting period, but I, as a as an artist who has an MFA and has studied a lot of art history, it's not my favorite time period. 
Yeah, I know it's very popular though, and it's actually really popular with home decor, funny enough. But nevertheless, I kind of got swept up in the excitement of this um, mystery knit along, and I decided I, I stashed dove last night, and I think I came up with what I'm gonna use for the knit along. So I'm gonna show you. Um, the instructions were to, you could actually buy kits from Bull and Vine if you wanted that Helen had helped curate. So you, you knew you were, you know, you're, that's probably a, a really safe bet. <laughs> um, cause then you know they're going to work together. Um, but in, you know, if you're willing to, if you want to stash dive and you want to get in on it, the first clue is going to be released on March 31st. And right now there's a pattern discount if you buy early. Um, and you can, you can, you know buy the pattern now and knit it whenever. You don't have to knit it along with everyone else. Though, I find that a really good motivator. So I do really like, um, I do really like knit alongs. But um, anyway, I, the instructions said pick a dark, a medium, and a light skein. So I, for my light skein, I chose this one. This is one that I've had for quite a while. Uh, it is called, it's a Garn Story. Garn Story, eh, Garn Stories. This is an older skein. This is the first Garn Story skein that I bought. Um, and it's the color is called Cosmic, and I think she um I think she still makes it pretty regularly. She just had a shop update this week after right after um EYF. So um I this one <laughs> to me, like I, when I ordered it online, it, it I don't remember what attracted me to, to it, but in, in the flesh, it's it's like very Americana because it's red, white, and blue. There is some pink in there, and there's also some gold. Um, so I've really been struggling with what to do with it, and I really think that it is destined to be part of a shawl no matter what. So the one thing I do like about the shawl design is that Helen is recommending um, single base. So I am interested in getting reducing the amount of single bases that I have in my stash. So I thought this would be a good way to participate in something that's social and knitting and fun and um, also a good way to use up my singles base. I certainly don't need more shawls on the needles though. Okay, so that's my light color. Then my medium color, I went with a um, Hedgehog Fibers. Uh, Firefly, which is a club color from I don't even know what month, but some month last year because I haven't had I haven't been in, on the club colors this year at all. So um, and I just destashed a whole bunch of Hedgehog Fibers singles bases because I had so much of it. So I've reduced a lot, but isn't this this color? This was one that I really loved, and I did not want to destash. I'm very excited to be able to use it. It's a nice sort of navy or blue based um, multicolored skein. So I really love it. And finally, for my dark color, I'm using a Garn Story. This is the newer label. It's the color Grunge, which is just a nice, uh, I would say, on the darker side of gray and uh, has pops of pink and blue and green and gold. So together, my light dark, light medium dark, I think that'll be really nice. So they both have, um, so it's sort of a blue gray base um, shawl. So yeah, I'm not gonna cake these for a little bit. I, um, the first clue's coming out March 31st, so that's a week from today, basically. I, and I think I will um, wait a little bit make sure my choices are right I'm gonna kind of take a peek at other people's works in progress before I start that because I really have plenty of <laughs> shawls to to knit on and hopefully in the meantime like that worsted weight shawl I will be able to knock that out right away or really quickly and um, yeah I, I'll get it out to test knits and tech editing and I should be able to release that pretty soon. I know it's not really season for worsted weight, but I was just really, I'm really excited to use Tabitha's yarns in a design and also just, you know, excited to, I'm excited to see it knit up and I feel like this is the right design for these yarns and I think the colors are on point and you know what? 
I mean, I wear shawls all year round because I'm often transitioning even in the summer months and the warm months from um, heat outside into cool in indoor temperatures. And, um, you know, there's nothing worse than being really cold on a summer day because you're inside with air conditioning that you don't have any control over. <laughs> Um, I'm drinking David's Tea Wild Strawberry. It's a really, really nice flavor. It's strawberry flavored with rosemary in it. I really, really like it. It's really tasty. I'm almost out of it. I have to buy more. Okay, so those are my works in progress and my works about to, my one that's going to be cast on. Um, I won't show you that next week if it's, if it's nowhere. I haven't done anything with it. So I am on to acquisitions um, right now. So I want to show you what I acquired this week, what came in the mail. So these are purchases that I made a little while ago, but um, they just came um, this week since the last time I podcast with you. So I bought uh, Stranded Dye Works house red this isn't really her house red this is it's on her paradise base which is the mcn base the merino nylon cashmere cashmere nylon um base and this one uh did she yeah she called this is a paint box color so she was working on getting her house red color right and so, uh, a couple weeks ago so she had had a bunch of um colors that she didn't think were quite right for her house red but they nevertheless they were pretty and um, since I like to knit in the MCN with the MCN bases from all the dyers, I was pretty keen to get an MCN base. So I didn't buy House Red. I brought, bought one that was close to it. And I really love it. It's just so pretty. So pretty. I think her House Red might be a little brighter than this. I'm, I'm trying to remember what the difference was between this one and her House Red. Maybe this is a little bluer than the House Red. I'm not sure. The other skein that I got, I I saw this on Instagram. Somebody else posted it, and I don't even remember who, but I got sucked right in. I went right over to the woman's website, and I bought it. So it's a, a new-to-me yarn dyer called Air de Lune. I'm not really sure what that means. I think it might mean, um, I know Lune is moon. I'm going to put what it means online. I mean, sorry, on uh, on the screen. I meant to look it up before. Um, but she is a, a a French dyer who is a French transplant who lives in Boston area. So it's very close to me. And um, so, you know, if you're if you're like me and you buy yarn from all over the world, um, you know that um, shipping costs if you buy U.S. is much better <laughs> than shipping costs if you buy from out of U.S. Even if you're buying from Canada, um, parts of Canada are closer to me than parts of the United States, but it's I'm I'm paying more I'm paying a lot more shipping and there's a there's a dyer whose work I really love I think I follow her on Instagram I can't even remember her name right now because I've never bought anything from her because her shipping costs she, she's a Canadian she her shipping costs are the cost of a skein of yarn and I don't want to spend a cost of a skein of yarn to have my stuff ship so I just wait till I see them at a festival or something but anyway this is her fingering base. Um, I, what I love about this are those tonal speckles. So this, the idea of darker red speckles on this pretty pink base. I just think it's amazing. It's just, wow. I was just really awed by that. Um, and what's cool about hers, it's, this is a hundred percent, um, superwash merino. It's, this is called cherry blossom song. And she sent me a couple really cool things. So I knew when I was buying it, this that the um, skein was inspired by this photograph. But she sent me a picture. This is on photograph paper. I mean, I got the picture, <laughs> the, a picture of the inspiration that she she sent along with the with the skein, which I thought was really cool. So all of her colors are inspired by photographs, and she calls them knitting memories. The other thing that I got, so this is, um, this is, I assume, like her business card. So there's another example of the, um, of a knitting memory. 
I don't know what that color is called because it's not listed on there. And it, of course it says thank you. Thank you for your order and happy knitting. And she, Emma, her name is Emma. So super interesting. I think she has a really good touch with the dyes and a, a, a good sense for color. Um, I wonder, I do wonder if she's limiting herself a little bit to by, by working with photographs. So this, this is a, uh, amazing. Amazing. She also sent along a really cute little bag that says thank you with a cute cat on it. And in the bag, there were teas and some yarn soak, some wool wash, and a candy. Which, wow, I mean, just really, I was super impressed. Like, very, very cool, over the top. Um, I, and I love, I love puka tea. That's, if I'm buying tea in the bag, this is what I'm buying. I've never tried this flavor. Wild apple and cinnamon with ginger. It sounds so good. So, um, so yeah. So that's, that's a... Uh, those are my acquisitions. Um, other than that, I, I spent a lot of time this week just thinking about um, ways to get like ways to get recognition and and um, interest in my channel. And I, I have like so many great ideas for giveaways and I, I actually have a couple really awesome giveaways that I was waiting to reach another milestone, like maybe 500 subscribers or something like that. And so I, I, I did, a, I spent a lot of time this week looking at YouTube and think, thinking about their algorithm. I mean, they never tell you what their algorithm is like, and, and I feel like they tweak them all the time anyway, but just trying to figure out ways that I can get more, you know, that I can get my, my, um, video my podcast in front of more people. So I did a couple tweaks to some of my descriptions and I did a couple tweaks to my title to get myself out there to get to hopefully put my get my um, videos more views and I know it's like kind of like I'm in a catch-22. I feel like I'm in a catch-22 with my patterns as well which I'm going to come back to that in a second. But I'm in this catch-22 where you need views in order to get views and it's like how am I supposed to? It's like that old saying, like, you need money to make money. It takes money to make money. Well, it takes views to get views. <laughs> and um, if I'm not getting a lot of views, how am I going to get views? And if I'm not getting a lot of likes, how am I going to get likes? And by the way, I really think the like and dis dislike thing aspect of YouTube really sucks. I just think it's like, you know what? If you like my channel, you should comment. If you dislike it, you should comment. Like you should tell me what you don't like about it so then I can do some changes instead of just like, it's, it's just such a cop out to just like hit the dislike button and be like, I don't like this. You didn't tell the person what you didn't like about it. You just decided like, it seems so mean spirited, that dislike button. I just think the like dislike thing is just really stupid. I don't like it. Dislike. I dislike the like dislike thing. <laughs> I dislike thumbs up, thumbs down. It's really dumb. But yeah, anyway, um, I don't have the ear of the YouTube folks, so I doubt they're going to do anything about that. Um, so yeah, I ha and I have the same problem with my patterns. Like I have released quite a few patterns. My, my um, best selling pattern is my Christmas so sock pattern, Christmas stocking pattern. You wouldn't know it though because nobody makes project pages. I guess I'm, it's like me and 10 other people make project pages. I don't know. It just, I don't know. I, I like to see my stuff. Like I like the ready accessibility of being able to see my, I like to see my progress. I like to post pictures. I enjoy that. I get that that might be a pain in the ass to some people and they're not going to do that. Um, but it would really help sell my stuff, sell my patterns if people would post project pages and link the pattern. It's, it's, you know, it's a little, it's a little frustrating. Even my test knitters, I have test knitters, like, I don't feel like test knitters are, um, it's hard to get a good group of test knitters. First of all, they don't, you know, they test one pattern and then they're like, you know, they're like magpies flying after the next shiny object and they're not interested in testing for you because they're testing five other things for five other people and that's fine. But testing having your patterns tested, that's important. But also what's important is just that they set up a project page. So I've had testers who don't set up project pages and it just really, 
it's kind of crappy. It's like a kind of a crappy situation to be in as a designer because people come along and they look at your patterns and they might like them, but they're afraid because there's not, there's your project page, my own project page, and maybe I've done a second thing or a third thing. And there aren't any other project pages. It's just like my, I have a sock pattern. I, I, I took an old vintage sock pattern and I reworked it a little bit with more, um, with modern lingo. And I resized it a tiny bit and I, I did, I tweaked it. I know I've said I'm not a sock knitter, but this was when I was first discovering sock knitting. And um, the pattern was actually made for men. So I, I changed it around a little bit to make it more the kind of, a kind of sock that I would want to wear. And then I published the pattern. It's free. It's a free pattern. Over 200 people have downloaded that pattern. Do you know how many project pages there are? Four. Three of them are mine. <laughs> it's frustrating. Um, it would be really useful if people would make a project page. Anyway, I, I am uh, uh, ranting. I know I'm ranting. But it's it's just, it's again, like pattern. my patterns are in a catch-22 as well. I'm struggling to get recognition because... Um, things that people use, like those product reviews that people use on Amazon and stuff like that, like a project page is a product review. So it's super useful if you're going to knit one of my patterns to make a project page. So, and to comment, and guess what? I look at those project pages and if you're having, if you're struggling with something about the pattern, I'm going to talk to you about it. Um, I'm willing to, I, I'm here to support your pattern. I am a professor. I am a teacher. I am skillful in explaining things to people. That's what I do for a living. So it's something that I think I'm good at. So um, now that you've heard my my rant, what, one thing that I do want to do in the spirit of sharing and in the spirit of a giveaway and in the spirit of maybe you know, I don't know, one or two of you will actually make a project page. I want to give away my shawl pattern, the shawl that lived, the one that exists, the one that I'm knitting on the, in the Hagrid's umbrella, the pink one I'm making. I have, this pattern has been published for about eight months. I have um, sold many copies and there are no project pages other than my own. Um, I would like to gift it to you, dear viewer <laughs> or viewers. Um, when I'm only going to say this in the video, this won't be anywhere else. So only if you've watched the video and you've got to this point in the video, you're going to know that I am um, that I am gifting it. The way to get it from me as a gift is to message me, to inbox me on Ravelry, and tell me that you want it. Just say you can just write free shawl pattern or hey I'm really interested in the, I want the pattern you don't have to say anything else just write you know the shawl that lived yes I yes please or something it could be very brief doesn't even have to be a complete sentence I'll get it and I will gift it to you through Ravelry it'll be downloaded into your into your um, Ravelry library you can download the PDF to your computer you can print it whatever you want to do um, but I want to do something for those of you who are watching and I also, you know, maybe, maybe you'll help me too. I don't know. If you don't feel like making a project page, that's fine too. I'm going to not require <laughs> that you tell me you're going to do that. I don't need you to, uh, yeah, I, yes, I need you to do that, but I, I'm not requiring that you do that in order to get the, the free pattern. I'm happy to just gift it to you and you can reach out to me anytime. If you forget about it this week and you remember next week, that's fine. If you watch this and I said I would give it to you, you can just say, saw you on YouTube, want want the pattern, and I will I will gift it to you. It's a really, um, it's a three skein pattern. Um, you use um, one and a half skeins of one color, a full skein of the lightning bolt color, and then the trim around the outside is a third color, and you use about half a skein. So you could make the trim the same color as your, as your non-lightning bolt color, um, and it would be um, it would be a, a true three skein pattern. I use three different colors. I use a skein and a half of the color for the what I call the main color. Then the lightning bolt color um, is a full skein. So, and I mean, I think the pattern's a really nice knit. It's funny, like knitting it now. Like I did start that a while ago, and then I've been working on it the last couple of days just to 
I, I really want to move it along, get it off my needles. <laughs> um, and it's been, it's, it's been interesting. Like I did not remember anything about the pattern. I mean, I kind of vaguely knew, I knew the shape, I knew the silhouette, but I didn't really remember much about it. And, um, knitting it a, you know, a second time after a lot of time has passed, it's like, I'm, you know, I may, ha may as well be, uh, like you <laughs> knitting the pattern for the first time. So I had to go back and re remember um, all of the stitches and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think it's a good mix of interesting knitting where you're thinking, you've got some thinking parts when you're doing the lace and then some restful rows of just that garter stitch, that plain garter stitch um, row. And I remember the trim. The trim is one, is a lace pattern that I made up and I remember it being really intuitive like after doing a couple repeats it's pretty easy to memorize and it comes out really really cute like I really am happy with the way the trim came out but anyway I am going to end this here thank you for sticking with me through my rant and my revisit of the shawl that lived in terms of like just telling you a little more information about it maybe enticing you to reach out to me and ask me for it um and we'll see. Um, I, I look forward to sharing it with you and I look forward to this channel growing so I could do more giveaways of tangible things. Like I have some really cool books to give away. I just need more viewers. Um, and maybe me, my tweaking of um, trying to access, trying to tap into the algorithm that YouTube has will um, also help with um, building the channel. I really want to build the channel. I really want to um, get out there and I want to start you know, being more, getting more participation from viewers and stuff like that. So anyway, I hope you have a good week and a good rest of your weekend. And I look forward to sharing more with you on future viewers. So please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And also please hit the like button if you haven't liked um, the video. That really helps my viewership, helps me get in front of people who are watching other uh, knitting podcasts and stuff like that. So Thank you for watching and thanks for spending a little bit of your time with me, a little bit of your day with me, and I will see you next time. Bye!